Hi everybody and welcome to the ninth video of this series where we make an 8-ball pool game while using only JavaScript and HTML5. In the last video we've pretty much finished implementing the physics for this game. We still have some fixes and refactoring that needs to be done, but for now we have ball to ball collisions and ball to table collisions. And when I say ball to table collisions, I mean that when we'll shoot the ball towards the side, towards the cushion, the ball will be deflected off the side and will go to the opposite direction. In the first section of this video, we're going to refactor the code and fix some of the bugs and the issues that we still have here. After that, we'll get to the implementation of the logic of this game. Okay, so I changed my mind about this collide with method inside a ball class. Since we already implemented the collide with table method and the collide with ball method, I don't see the point of having a more generic method um, to handle collisions. Uh, maybe if we would have more types of object of objects that would be necessary But for now, I don't see that it's very useful. So I'm going to delete that and um, In any place that we call this method. I'm going to call the appropriate um, Replacement so uh, here I'm going to call the collide with table method and to send the table and Here I'm going to call the collide with ball method and to send the other ball. One more thing that I noticed is that we don't use this delta parameter that we send um, to the collide with ball method. So uh, you can see right here that uh, we just use the, the ball argument. Uh, so I'm going to remove that because we have no use of that. And let me just save. Back in our browser, let's see that everything still works and hmm. I think that we found a bug. Okay, so I think that I know what is the issue. Uh, the issue is that inside the collide with table, we need to uh, pull the ball away from the table as soon as we have collision. So in case of collision with the top border, I need to set the Y coordinate to be uh, the table dot top Y plus the ball radius. In case of collision with the right border, I need to set the x coordinate of the position to be the table dot right x minus the ball radius. And the same way, we need to change the y coordinate of the position to be uh, the table dot bottom y minus the ball radius in case of collision with the bottom border. And finally, in case of collision with the left border, we need to change the x coordinate of the position to be the table dot left x plus the ball radius. Now back in the browser, let's shoot and it seems like the issue is gone. Okay, so let's move on to the next issue that we need to fix. Right now you'll see that nothing stops me from shooting the white ball while it's already moving and that causes this strange behavior. Okay, so that's pretty easy to fix. All we need to do is to go to the update method inside the stick class and we need to check if this dot shot is true and if it is, we need to return from this method and um, that's it. Great, so now we see that as long as the white ball is moving, we cannot shoot it to any other direction. Back in our code. So, so far in this section, we focus on bug fixing and code refactoring. And before we move on to the implementation of the logic for this game, I want to make the code a bit more readable and sustainable. So the thing that bothers me the most is that ugly chunk of code where we define the ball's parameters inside a game world. So I will create a new file that I will call constants.js and there I'm going to uh, define a new object that I will call constants. And this object will um, eventually contain all the constants of this game but for now I'm going to add um, the parameters the balls params and I'm going to cut all this chunk of code and paste that here inside of an array and back in the game world I'm going to call constants dot balls params and I can use the map operator to create a new ball for each pair of parameters. And instead of sending params at 0 and params at 1, I can use the spread operator. 
and that looks much much better so now I'll open the browser again and see that everything still works and let's refresh and no something went wrong okay let's see what happened um, constants is not defined we need to go to the index.html file and add a reference to the script file that we just wrote so um, here I'm going to add um, constants.js and let's go back again to the browser and let's refresh and yeah that works just fine another thing we should change here is the way that we get the reference for the white ball nothing promises me that it will be the last of the array if anyone changes it so I will get it by its color so um, this dot balls dot find um, a ball that its color ball dot color is equal to color dot white and for that to work we need to save the color argument that is passed into the balls constructor so here I set the color property of the ball object to be the color argument that is passed into the constructor okay so let's begin to copy all the other constants that we defined in our code to the constants object that we created so let's start with the ball origin um, I will create a new property inside the constants object that I will call ball origin and here I rather use the camel case um, convention so ball origin and it will have the same um, value and I can use command and D on my keyboard to find all the places that I use the ball origin and to change that to constants dot ball origin and now I can delete the line on the top because I don't need it anymore let's uh, check that nothing broke um, yeah everything still works fine okay so this is how the constants object looks eventually uh, you can see here all the constants that we defined in the code before only arranged in one object that we can use anywhere in our code well this was some tedious work that I had to do maybe I could prevent all that by designing the code better from the beginning but as a programmer I can tell you that this happens all the time and in any project that you will work on in the future eventually in some point you will have to refactor your code and change the way you do things so don't worry so much about that I will upload this code to my github page and leave a link in the description down below so you won't have to do all this work by yourselves okay so let's move on inside of vector2 class I want to add another method so I could get the distance between two vectors so let's write it down vector2.prototype.dist from and that will be equal to a function that will get as an argument another vector and it will return mm, it will return um, this dot subtract and I will send the other vector and I will return the length of the result now back in our constants object I will uh, create some constants that are related to the table um, so let me write it down here and the first one will be the pockets and that will be just an array of vectors so new vector 2 um, and let me write it down and the second one will be okay great so now we have an array that contains all the positions of the centers of the pockets beside that we will need to have the pocket radius that will be 46 back in the ball class I want to create a new method that I will call um, handle ball in pocket and that will be equal to a function that won't get any arguments and here down below I'm going to set uh, a new variable that will call in pocket to be um, constants dot pockets dot sum and that will give me true or false um, and uh, I'm going to uh, set that once you have a pocket you need to check if the uh, distance between the balls position 
to the pocket, which is actually the center of the pocket, is less than the pocket radius. And if that happens, that means that we found a pocket uh, that, that, that means that the ball is inside one of the pockets. And I need to return that, of course. Okay, so um, let's say uh, for now that if in pocket, that means if the ball is inside the pocket, uh, let's just uh, log a message for now. So we'll console.log pocket. And uh, let's call this method from the game world uh, inside this loop right above the collide with table call that we have here. Okay. So now back in the browser, when we shoot the ball and it goes inside a pocket, you can see a new message here in the console. Okay, so back in our code, let's do something else. Let's define a new property inside the ball class and I will call this property visible. And let's set it initially to be true. And back in our handle um, ball in pocket uh, method, um, if the ball is not inside a pocket, I want to return from this method and not do anything. And after that, I want to um, set this dot visible to be false and this dot moving to be false. Because I know that if we got to this line of code, that means that the ball is inside a pocket. Now in the update method, we need to check whether the ball is visible or not and if it's not we need to uh, return from this method and not do anything on our perspective the game is not the, the ball is not in the game anymore so let's copy that and do the same inside the draw method and inside the collide with ball method I want to check if one of the balls is not visible and in that case, I need to return from this method and not do anything because that means that this specific ball is not in the game anymore. So let me write it down. So if this ball is not visible or the other ball is not visible, I want to return. And let me just unindent this part. I don't know why that happens. Uh, that happened. But anyway, okay. So now that's better. Uh, let's go to the handle ball in pocket method and here I want to do the same thing uh, if the ball is not visible I want to return and inside the collide with table method um, let's add the condition to uh, the if statement so if the ball is not moving or it's not visible I want to return so back in the browser you can see that once a ball falls inside a pocket it disappears and becomes not part of the game anymore um, uh, you can actually play a full game like that if you will not accidentally put the white ball inside any of the pockets but don't worry about that because we will handle all those situations in the next videos so this was it for this video thank you very much for watching it and stay tuned for more goodbye